on page 1031. My intention that this will be the last bill of the day. The Committee on Transportation to which was referred, House Bill 1582, enact prohibiting New Hampshire from participating in a national identification card system. Having considered the same, report the same with the following resolution. Resolved that it is inexpedient to legislate. Representative Sherman Packett for the committee. Question before the House is the adoption of the committee report. Are you ready for the question? Chair, recognize member from uh, where? President Kirk to speak against the committee report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I commend the honorable member from Londonderry for his exceptionally well-written blurb. He's described accurately and in great detail the consequences for our state if this bill is adopted and the reason why the Transportation Committee, by an 18 to 1 vote, determined that the bill be inexpedient to legislate. I rise to ask you to overturn that report. There are times, Mr. Speaker, when we must look beyond the mundane and the pragmatic and take a stand based on our values and our vision for the state we are and the kind of state we wish to become. And I believe this is one of those times. This bill is very straightforward. It says that the state of New Hampshire will not participate in the Real ID Driver's License Program established by the federal government. The reason is simple. The Real ID Program creates a de facto national identification card. It does so by making the 50 states' driver's licenses meet uniform federal standards. Among other things, they must be machine readable and all of the data, not just name, photograph, uh, address, but driver's records, violations, suspension, and points must be entered into an interstate database and shared with all other states and the federal government. Of course, being machine readable, merchants and others will be in possession of this information when they require your driver's license for identification and scan your card into their readers. But that's a story for another day. I don't believe that the people of New Hampshire elected us to help the federal government create a national identification card. We care more for our liberties than to meekly hand over to the federal government the potential to enumerate, track, identify, and eventually control. But there's a price to be paid for such independence. If we don't participate in the Real ID system, we will have to use passports or other similar documentation to gain access to federal properties and to use air transportation. If we don't participate in the Real ID system, we may lose a $3 million earmark federal grant to update our motor vehicle department computers to make them Real ID compliant. There's little doubt that both these consequences will impose real burdens on our citizens. But I ask you, what price liberty? If I may adapt the words of an American patriot whose resounding sentiments moved the Virginia House of Burgesses to action in 1775, it is in vain, Mr. Speaker, to extenuate the matter. Members may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war on our civil liberties is actually begun. Will the next scale that sweeps from Washington bring to our ears the sounds of federal boots on the march? Why stand we here idle? What is it that members wish? What would you have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Our state motto, Mr. Speaker, is equally eloquent. Live free or die. I urge members to overturn the ITL and pass this bill to protect the liberties and freedoms of their friends, their families, their neighbors, and their constituents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Speaker. 
Chair, recognize the member from Londonderry, Representative Packett, who wishes to speak in favor of the committee report of inexpedient to legislate. Representative Packett. How do you follow that? I told my dear friend from Ware that uh, if I had time, I was going to go out and get a British general's red coat and uniform and stand up here because that's what he's probably about making me feel like right now. Um, I think I ought to be referred to as uh, Lord Cornwallis at this point. And whatever he said was true. I hate the Real ID Act. I've been working on it for a year and a half with the National Conference of State Legislators, and I can tell you our colleagues across the country hate it as much as we do. But tying our hands, as this bill will do, is not what I feel and our committee feels is the right thing to do. As if you will notice in the blurb, the Senate has passed a resolution that we will send to Washington and it will come over here and I hope we will pass it. I have also sponsored a resolution with the Transportation Committee, the National Council of State Legislators, sending that to Washington. Our colleagues from across the country that I talk to constantly are sending duplicate resolutions. Tying our hands at this point is not the right thing to do. I agree with the representative from where. This bill stinks. It's a horrible form of blackmail. I have been fighting federal blackmail for 30 years, and I'm fighting it now. But I urge you, don't tie our hands in this manner. There's a couple other things. This bill has a lot of gray area. The Department of Homeland Security is in the process of putting forth the rules and the regulations that we're going to have to live by. We don't know what they all are right now. Some of the statements that the representative from where said, well, were a little exaggerated on what will be on the license. We don't know if that's all going to have to be on the license as of this point. The Department of Homeland Security is going to be putting forth its rules sometime the end of this month or the beginning of next month. Then it will go to the Office of Management and Budget for 90 days. Then it will go out for public comment. We will know towards the end of this year what we have to do and what we don't have to do precisely. I am asking you to turn this bill down, and I make this commitment to you. If those rules are as terrible as they could be, I will co-sponsor legislation with Representative Kirk next year, if we're both here, to prevent us from participating in the Real ID Act. But well, that's two years away, two years away before we have to comply. Let's see what the rules are. Let's see what happens. Let us move forward with maybe this three million dollars so we maybe be able to do some upgrades to our computer systems and not be in violation of spending the money illegally. And I hope you will support the committee on this and, uh, vote ITL. Does the member yield a question? Yes. I'll Member Yields, one Member from Londonderry, Representative Robinson, you may inquire. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if you recall in our uh, committee hearings when we tried to work through some way of keeping the essence of the bill uh, in order to speak against New Hampshire participation in the Real ID Act, but without... Um, going to the step of requiring the Department of Motor Vehicles not to implement a change to the license. If you recall, if I'm correct in recalling, um, wasn't the basic problem there that we didn't know what we would say to people who didn't currently have passports, who might be on Social Security, might need to go to a Social Security office, and in order to get in would then be obliged to get a passport. And I wonder if we recall what the amount that we might be asking these people on fixed income already to spend on things like that, because I think that the question of the actual cost out of pocket to the people that we're trying to serve is a relevant one to this question. You answer well, that my, question? <laughs> I, I, I think he was asking me how much your passport costs, and that's $95 if that's what your question is. 
and uh, you know, it, it, it will. I don't think any of us wants to have to go back to our colleagues and tell them that every single one of our colleagues that wants to enter a federal building, board an airplane, has to get a passport because that's going to be the only form of federal recognition that they will accept if our driver's license don't comply. Thank you very much. And maybe you have a further question? One more. One more. The, me the chair recognized member from Milford, Representative O'Connell, for, for a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative and Chairman of the Transportation Committee. My question is probably going to throw a little bit more difficulty into this issue, I believe. It's come to my intention over the last few months that there's also another federal initiative coming out of Washington, D.C., referred to as the Western Hemisphere Tra um, Travel Initiative. And if I understand this correctly, by January 1st in 2007, all air and sea border crossings between Canada and the United States are going to require a passport or similar identification. By January 1st, 2008, that also applies to uh, land travel between our two countries and our other borders, but especially for us, Canada. And I'd like to know uh, if the committee has uh, basically considered that at all, because it would seem to me that's going to be drastic impact on our, our trade with Canada and also drastic impact on the tourism industry that we support from our neighbors to the north. Has the committee had an opportunity to consider that as well? House Green Artist. Well, it, it, we, did, we did consider it. We didn't consider it. It really has nothing to do with this subject matter in a sense. But the, the fact that anybody that wants to travel to Canada, what the State Department is coming out with is a land travel card that will only be good for car travel across the border between Canada and Mexico. That card will cost $15 for a child and $25 for an adult. It will not be good for boarding an airplane or boarding a ship. If you want to do that, if you want to leave the country by plane or ship, you will have to have a passport. That land border card, and I saw it, it's going to look like a driver's license, will only be good for, like I said, travel between Canada and uh, Mexico. And that would be accepted. But again, there's going to be many of our citizens, especially our elderly and poor, that aren't going to be going out to buy a land travel card or buying a passport. And thus, they would be drastically affected by not being able to use their driver's license or their identification card for entering a federal building or uh, basically uh, in any, any federal building would be um, uh, banned to them. Chair, recognize the member from Warren, Representative Guido, who wishes to speak against the committee report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and my apologies to my colleagues. I've been a captain for United Airlines for 10 years. I make my living in the transportation industry, and I have traveled to every continent by air on the globe, with the exception of Antarctica, and I don't plan on getting there anytime soon. This is a dangerously, uh, it's a very dangerous movement here, because in my 20 years, I have watched our government, under the guise of protecting its citizens, continue to enact measures that do no such thing. And every one of the measures coming forward now from the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Transportation and the Federal Aviation Administration and the Department of Highways Safety are focusing on limiting the mobility of our citizens. If you want to fly from Manchester Airport to anywhere in the world, you go through the potential of a full body search. X-rays, baggage, you're no safer now than you were on September 10th. The studies have proven this. What I'm driving to here is we now have a federal initiative that says we want to be able to monitor your movement within your own state and within the country just as we now restrict your movement within the country on airlines. The point is our mobility as citizens, our mobility as a society continues to be at risk. These measures do nothing to stop terrorism. The bad guys aren't going to sign up to get a driver's license. They're going to counterfeit it or ignore it and drive safely. We keep stricturing our own citizens. We keep levying costs and we keep doing further measures and all we're doing is encumbering. 
We're not making ourselves any safer. We are enabling ourselves to be terribly exploited by government that knows more about us than most of us know about ourselves. I strongly encourage you to join me and vote yes and push the green button in the interest of the freedom and the mobility of our society. I'm going to move to reconsider that statement. No. <laughs> Does the member yield a question? One question, Mr. One question. The chair recognized member from Belmont, Representative Thomas, for the purposes of a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, Representative, for taking the question. I wanted to ask this question, or uh, actually clarify a statement that was made earlier. As, as chair of the Canadian Trade Council, and we are the point people for Washington on this very issue about the Canadian border anyways, would you believe that that pass that is going to be used is still pretty much up into the air as to which form it's going to take and what is going to be required for that and also the price on it. And I'm talking about a discussion that I had, would you believe it was, this is a result of a discussion I had with the Consulate General where we actually amended part of the form two weeks ago. Thank you for your question, but the Canadian border is not going to be any safer because we require our law-abiding citizens to purchase a pass that says you can cross at a checkpoint. Bad guys don't cross at checkpoints. We, consider, we continue to impose the thinking of lawful citizens and to stricture them, forgetting the fact that those who break the law and those who wish us harm have no intention of complying with these laws and never will. Please vote with me. Push the red button. Question before the House is the adoption of the committee report of inexpedient to legislate. I have a request by Representative Dickinson for a roll call. Is that sufficiently seconded? It is. The Sergeant of Arms will bring the people in from the halls. Members will take their seats. Chair will state the parliamentary situation. The question before the House. Members will be. House will be attended. The question before the House is the adoption of the committee report of inexpedient to legislate on House Bill 1582, an act prohibiting New Hampshire from participating in the, se in the National Identification Card System. That is the question before us. We have a request for a roll call. If you're in favor of the committee report of inexpedient to legislate, you will press the green button. Chair you recognize Representative Kirk? for the purposes of a P.I. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if I believe that no amount of federal money should induce us to give up the essential liberties that are lost with the national ID card, and Mr. Speaker, if I want New Hampshire to lead the nation in sending a powerful message to the federal government that this small state cannot be coerced or bribed into surrendering the principles embodied in its state motto, then, Mr. Speaker, would I now vote against ITL so that a subsequent motion of ought to pass can be offered and, and fire a shot that will be heard around the nation 
by pressing the red button. Thank you, Mr. Chair. chair the Chair recognizes Representative Packard for the purpose of a parliamentary inquiry. House will be in order. Mr. Speaker, if I know that I'm dead, could I still ask this body to support the Transportation Committee and press the green button? Thank you. Chair would state the parliamentary situation. The vote, the question before the House is the adoption of the Committee Report of Inexpedient to Legislate on House Bill 1582. If you support the majority report, you will press the green button. If you oppose that, you will press the red button. Stations are now open for 30 seconds. House will tend the state of the vote. 84 having voted in the affirmative. House will be in order. 270 in the negative. The motion fails. Chair recognize Representative Kirk for the purposes of offering a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, members. I move off to pass and ask that you press the green button on that motion. Question before the House is, is the motion offered by Representative Kirk that House Bill 1582 be ought to pass. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor of adopting the motion will signify so by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Aye. The ayes have it. House Bill 1582 is ordered to third reading.